Well, one thing I've done with mathematical programs like MathCAD is build models which are combined monetary and physical models of the economy. And I've been waiting until Missy gets to the stage where we can handle the same thing. I thought I'd try it today while I'm in New York to think, come back and have dinner with uh, Max and Stacey. And I want to show that it's actually incredibly easy to combine a monetary and a physical model. So what I've done in this particular simulation, which I'll put up on the um, on my website uh, for people to access shortly, is in this region, I just can highlight it here, from here down to here, I have the type of monetary model that I've done so far, so far with Minsky where I just use the godly table, as I've done at the top here, to generate financial flows. And over here, whoops, pardon me, over here, uh, sorry, I'll turn this in. And here I have a typical Goodwin model. And you can see from the simulation I've run here, I have cyclical behaviour of the employment rate and wage of share going on over here. And in this area, I've got uh, stability occurring with the level of the loans in the economy. So I'll take you through each of them step by step and explain the logic. You start off by saying there's a level of output, which the economists use the symbol Y for. Uh, divide that by A for labour productivity, and you have L for the number of workers you're going to hire. Divide L by N for the population, and you get the employment rate. That becomes an actual Greek lambda when we spit this out as a set of equations, so it's the employment rate. I'm then feeding into a typical linear Phillips curve where I have Milton Friedman's delusional idea of a non-accelerating inflation rate of employment. Subtract the actual rate of employment from that. You work out the gap between the two. Multiply that by a slope. You get how much wage has changed given a gap between actual employment and this mythical equilibrium level. Multiply that by the wage. Integrate it, you have the wage. Multiply the wage by labour, you get the wage bill. Subtract that from output, you get profit. In the simple model, all profit is invested. Investment is the rate of change of capital stock. Divide by the accelerator relationship, you get back to output. That's the cyclical model there. Over here, what I've got is quite simple. I have interest being paid on existing uh, debt, which $100 million, let's say, from the firm sector to the banking sector. I have the workers being paid wages, the bankers consuming or intermediate goods, and the, the workers consuming. And that gives me this system over here. So if I stop the model and simulate two, so I've got two basically separate systems. Uh, one with the wage settling down to an equilibrium level here, the amount of money in the deposit account settling down to equilibrium, blah, blah, blah. And over here I've got cyclical behaviour. Well, how do you make a combined physical and monetary model? It's actually ridiculously easy. Notice I've got wages here being based upon the amount of money in the firm's account, uh, which if I divide firm's account by um, the turnover rate for the amount of money in the account that gives you GDP, divide that by, multiply that by worker share of output, you get wages, and that's what gives the wages transfer here. But notice I've got the wage bill over here. Well, if I just go to the Godly table here and make this wage bill, and of course, minus wage bill for the sector is consistent across the rows, I've now linked the two models. Now, of course, I've got even more than that to make it uh, completely genuine, but let's just stop and simulate. And I've now got a rather different dynamic turning up in the wages share. And of course, I've got, uh, I haven't completely defined profits over here, but you can see instantly I've now got something generated by this system, which gives you wages and employment, which are a function of the rate of profit, profit decisions, and so on over here, feeding into the financial sector. And that is the starting point for linking a monetary model, which is this bit, which Minsky does, which is a unique capability it has, to a physical model of the economy. Ultimately, I want to build far more elaborate models that are genuine similar lacrums of the genuine monetary physical economies in which we live. And this is what Minsky is directed at doing. I'll post a later example where I put up a more elaborate model where I've got uh, interest rate deductions being made and so on. But just to quickly demonstrate that, for example, let's just stop this. Of course, I've got to now include interest payments are paid over here. Let's take a copy of that, bring this down here, flip it over, and of course, Profits are now net not just at the wage bill, but also interest payments. And we think eventually we've made our uh, operators like a minus key multimodal. So if you have 13 things and if you subtract, just connect them all to the minus sign down the bottom there. Let's stop and simulate that. This still isn't quite complete. But notice the slightly different dynamics coming out of this. So I've broken the, uh, because it's now a three-dimensional system, I've broken the 
uh, rigid limits, uh, or the, uh, not limit cycle, but that's, I'll call it limit cycle, as my mathematician friends would know, I shouldn't be doing this while I've got jet lag, uh, but a closed cycle rather than a limit cycle can become a genuine limit cycle by including a very simple model of the financial sector. Okay, that's uh, what we can do with MISPI at the moment. I'll make it much more elaborate and a later model I'll put up on the, on the web, but um, you know, we need to go a long way from here, from the toy modeling we can do right now to a serious model modeling platform for the economy. This is the vision, a combined monetary physical model of the economy. Thank you for watching.